So for the last seven days, I've been testing out a plug and play solar panel setup. I have four solar panels that are 360 watts a piece plugged into a micro inverter that then output 120 volts that I can take right into an exterior outlet. It's not quite as easy as taking a cord directly from your panels and plugging that in, but it is about as easy of a setup as you possibly can get. Now with that said, what are the actual results? How much energy have I produced? And is this even safe, approved by your local electrical inspector and approved by the utility that we're feeding power back into? So like I said, I have a video kind of going over this full setup, so I won't rehash everything. Below the video in the description, you'll find links to different products, but also links to that original video if you want more details. So we have our four panels. Those are 360 watts a piece by Helion. A lot of people asked about that mount. You can get it from Signature Solar. It's an EG4 Bright mount, and then that's just on a base made out of pressure-treated 4x4 posts. Then we have a B and H 1200 watt micro inverter and this is kind of the key to the whole system it can take all four of those panels in through the mc4 connectors and then you can see the output here which goes down to a small display which is not weather tight for long-term use you need to mount this in a weather sealed container but it's kind of handy having the output here now if you look back up Within the seven day test, we actually had an issue on day two, and that is indicated by this red LED right here. And I saw a lot of the reviews on Amazon where I got this, complaints of this overheating, and I saw that exact failure mode. Now I've taken power off of this for multiple hours, tried to reset it, but it always comes back with the red LED, and it basically has made these bottom two not functional. So the maximum that I'm able to get out of this, basically over that full seven day trial, is about 550 watts coming from these top two panels and then that top inverter. It's my best guess y &H has a 600 watt inverter and then it has this 1200 watt. So I think it's two separate inverters in one, but we're gonna know more about that in a second because I'm actually gonna open this guy up and, and see if we can find any heat damage on this bottom portion, which would be the source of our failure. And then one thing I didn't note, you'll see the LED flashes green sometimes and then solid green other times. When you have partly cloudy conditions, you'll have mostly flashing, and that's the MPPTs trying to find the ideal conditions for these panels to get the most power output. And then when it locks green, that means it's locked in on that ideal point on the curve. Now, when it comes to our results, I monitored the seven day trial through an Emporia energy monitor that is installed in my electrical panel. Super inexpensive device, and it comes in very handy for things like this. I have both my home and a quote unquote content house, which is this house on this Emporia Energy Monitoring app. And I can expand out and we look across our last hour from solar, from this microinverter, we've produced 198 watt hours and we've actually only consumed 241 watt hours. So there's not much going on in terms of the house. It's an overall mild day, so the heat pump really isn't running. And we really only have like a fridge and a dehumidifier that runs some of the time. If I roll that up to the day, we've produced two kilowatt hours today. We've consumed 5.3. And then the week, what were the overall results? All week, remember, we basically lost this bottom half, this bottom 600 watts on day two. We've produced 7.6 or 7.7 .7 kilowatt hours, and then we've consumed about 32 kilowatt hours. So if I go by what I pay for energy, which is only 12 cents per kilowatt hour, we produce less than $1 of overall energy from this setup. So take that into account when you're considering would something like this work for you and your setup. Now we had four days of sun and three days of partly cloudy conditions. So it wasn't perfect conditions. We're also in November, so the days are getting shorter, but it was pretty good conditions. And I wanted to produce a little bit more, especially if we could have got up to more like the 1000 watt output or 1100 watts of output for any considerable period of time. I thought we'd rack up a little bit more kilowatt hours. And that probably goes without saying, you know, two days of runtime before you have a failure is completely unacceptable. So I definitely do not recommend this unit off of Amazon. Now, before we open this up and just kind of look at the internals, let's talk about local codes. You can check 
check with your local building inspector, which I did, and he indicated as long as it's certified UL 1741 that it would be acceptable. So let's touch on that. UL 1741 is some safety standards. If you're gonna plug something into the grid that produces power, it is a source of power, then it has to be able to monitor the grid. So whenever the grid goes down, this shuts down and it doesn't backfeed onto the grid. That's a very important safety consideration. Now I tested that by hitting the main breaker and then using a multimeter to make sure this wasn't outputting any power. And it does have that functionality. It is a quote unquote smart inverter, but I can't find any certification that this actually was tested by UL. So this probably would not actually meet the standards of my local inspector. And then onto utilities, my utility does call out that same standard. It calls out another IEEE standard and then also a standard out of California. All those have to be approved for it to be approved for net metering because there are certain scenarios where you're not using any power in the house, so you'll be back feeding on the grid. So unfortunately, I'm in talks with the utility, but this microinverter is not gonna cut it for their standards and to be approved for net metering. Now I'm not giving up. There is a microinverter that I found that checks all those boxes within the standards. And I'm working with the utility to see if that microinverter is acceptable to be approved for net meter. But independent of that, this type of setup, I think is just a supplemental setup. It's gonna help you offset some of your power consumption. If you really wanna offset your monthly bill, that's a little bit larger system. And for me, that was 11 kilowatts that I just got installed on my home. A great place to start off is just to start getting an idea of what size you need to offset your current consumption and associated how much is that going to cost. There's a link below the video in the description and you can enter in some of your information on your home so it can right size that system and then right away you're going to get an estimate on that cost. Now if that seems like it's something feasible for you in the near future, the same system can connect you up with local installers to start to lock in quotes on your home to see if that's right for you to get it installed in your home. Now just know it can take months and months and months and months from getting it locked in, starting to pay your deposits, getting the installers out, getting commissioned by the utility, it takes a long time. And I'll roll that up in lessons learned on the channel here on a separate video. And now to finish off the video, I'm actually gonna take this guy off, unplug everything, take off this top cover and see if we can see any heat damage here, which would be the source of our failure. So just from a visual inspection, we are confirming that this is just two 600 watt units together in one housing and then connected up through this set of conductors. Other than that, I don't see anything that stands out as being fried. There were these small pads on the caps that will pad up to this case. I don't know if that also helps to conduct heat from the capacitor to the aluminum housing, which is the method of dissipating the heat. But I think we've confirmed from the Amazon reviews and what we saw with a failure on day two when the outside temperature was like 45 degrees Fahrenheit, this overall unit has some type of issue with dissipating heat and causing failures. As always, appreciate you guys' feedback. Let me know what you think. And if you wanna see me do a cooling test on the solar panel to see if we can actually get any more power out of this, check out this video right here. I'll walk you through a test that I did this last summer, which has some pretty interesting results. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on the next one. Take care.